to our Merino success story now and a select group of Tasmanian wool growers has secured a lucrative deal with a German outdoor wear company. They're exporting 30 tonnes of wool a year to Europe and that figure is expected to triple in three years' time. As Fiona Breen reports, the German company is in love with the Tasmanian Merino story and farmers are in love with the premium prices. Bennett's a sixth generation wool grower based at Ross in Tasmania's Northern Midlands. It hasn't been easy making a living from wool in the past 20 years, but the family's persevered and now wool from the 180 year old property is being sold to a high end mountain wear clothing company from Germany called Autovox. Historic Tasmanian wool growing families like the Bennetts have become a winning marketing tool in the highly competitive European adventure wear market. They love the sort of the family farm situation, I suppose, and, and the country here that we've got and the way we look after our, our sheep. I mean, they're, they're our livelihood, so of course we look after them and um, yeah, they, they, they really like that and they, their customers are obviously prepared to pay for that story. We've had some of the people from Autovox have now been here for three years in a row and um, they seem to really love it. Yeah, last time they were here they spent a couple of weeks um, touring around Tasmania while they were here and um, they do love the Tasmanian story. Will Bennett is one of a select group of Tasmanian producers to sign a lucrative multi-year contract negotiated by wool brokers Roberts. We've sort of had to uh, match up the raw wool supplier with the, with the company. Um, there were certain attributes that, that Autovox were after and uh, so we had to sort of hand, hand pick the, the farmers or the growers to be able to supply the wool to meet their characteristics. Eight years of work by Will Bennett on improving his flock's genetics has paid off. He's Autovox's only Tasmanian supplier of ultra-fine 16 micron wool. We've managed to, to lower our micron, you know, three microns in the last eight years whilst increasing our, our fleece weight. And by breeding bigger, plainer-bodied merinos, the Bennetts have been able to stop the controversial practice of musing or cutting the wrinkled flaps off the sheep's behind for fly strike. It's a radical change for this traditional sheep farming family, but it's paid off. We did originally um, uh, bring in some genetic, genetics from the New England New South, in New South Wales. Um, we're, now, we're now in partnership um, with a property up there, Yalgo, and um, we're, we're breeding our own rams down here um, in partnership with Yalgo. About 50% of Will Bennett's clip now goes to Germany, where it's used in underwear or close to skin garments. As you can see, the wool, um, beautiful white and bright, um, wool 16 to 16 and a half micron wool. Um, they've got another month to go before shearing. Uh, and yeah, that they really like this finer micron wool for their next to skin products that they make. A secure contract to grow wool for the European company is the perfect buffer for the Bennetts in a volatile wool market. The rest of their clip rides the ups and downs of the auction floor. It helps us um, plan for the future and um, yeah, we've um, decided to stick with merinos and um, now we can put even more emphasis on the breeding of, of these sheep to produce more wool. According to Autovox, this is where the air is at its purest and the sheep live in incomparable seclusion. Tasmania, they say, is a natural paradise and the wool is the best in the world. And their marketing pitch is working a treat in Europe. 
The company says its sales are climbing, up by an extraordinary average of 50% a year. At Ultrabox, uh, we always um, create the best products for our target group, the mountaineers. And one of the core is the wool, the wool fiber, the uh, natural wool fiber. So we are working since 1988 with the wool, but not only the pure wool, also in mixtures and blends um, with functional fibers like polyester or polyamide. In March, Autovox brought company executives, fabric suppliers and yarn producers to Tasmania. Our intention is to be as close as possible to all different stages in the supply chain. I mean, it is uh, necessary for us um, to have this close relation because uh, we are developing functional um, wool items and uh, this development needs, of course, a lot of effort, a lot of time and a lot of conversation um, back and forward. Autobox is buying 600 bales of Tasmanian wool, or 300 tonnes a year, but plans to triple the contract to 900 tonnes in the future. We've probably been working on this for three or four years now, um, from introduction to Autovox, um, yeah, like I say, four years ago, to the point now where we're actually uh, signing contracts and delivering wool. While the Bennetts are supplying ultra-fine wool, the majority of the contracted clip is 19.3 micron, which will be used in what's called second and third layer clothing. We have the second layer, uh, like I'm wearing here, this uh, fleece jacket, um, where we have the wool inside and the polyester outside in the same fabric. And then we're using the insulation. For insulation, we have also the wool inside and the functional polyamide uh, outside and then of course the third layer um, where we're using um, functional polyamide outside, um, DWR, durable water repellency, um, then a membrane and inside the wool backer. Brothers Richard and James Hallett run 34,000 merinos at the historic Lamberis property at Hollow Tree in Tasmania's southern highlands. The 8,000 hectare property has been in the family for 150 years. The brothers recently signed a contract to sell most of their wool clip to Autovox. Their first consignment will come from this winter shearing of 3,000 pregnant ewes. Beautiful and white, um, good length, very sound. So, uh, and, and ideal micron, so this will be perfect for the Autovox program. Yeah, yeah, just got to keep an eye on the wool cut, try and keep it up and, and maintain those uh, specifications. The property has changed significantly in the last decade to include irrigated crops like poppies, but the family kept the faith with wool. I guess you're always looking at uh, ways to improve the flock and every time they come near the shed, near the yards, we're always going through them, you know, every now and again you'll select a couple out of a mob that aren't right and uh, we're constantly at that and we're starting to see the benefits from doing that. The Hallets stopped musing about eight years ago and while the Bennetts use genetics to prevent fly strike, the Hallets are putting more into labour. There's more management around the summer months when, when, when you know, when the flies are around. You know, you've got to be monitoring sheep, you know, a lot, a lot more closely than you usually would. Um, yeah, we we take measures to prevent as much as we can any sort of fly strike. Yeah, there's more labour involved and there's more time involved. For both families, the Autovox contracts are reward for making big changes to suit the market. First time in yeah, six, seven years, we've been able to see a, a premium for for what uh, we believe is a premium product. It's it's um it's been been really good. But yeah, for the first five, six years that we had ceased mulesing, we didn't we couldn't see a difference in the market. Alistair Calvert says European niche fabric makers and retailers are increasingly demanding wool from unmused sheep. 
Transparency across the supply chain is what Autovox is after. And by doing what their customer wants, Tasmanian producers are setting themselves apart from some of the bigger wool growers on the mainland. The commodity approach is, is, is good um, to transact the product, but uh, to, to look at longer term sustainable prices, I think that we need to actually try and get closer to the end user and, and the consumer. And through an approach like this, that's what we do. This is what our um, end consumers demand from Ortovox um, to provide this and to guarantee that it's really non mules the first bales of Tasmanian wool were shipped off two months ago. They'll be converted into yarn and fabric over the next couple of months. And by the time the northern winter hits, clothing made from Tasmanian wool will be on the shelves and racks across Europe. Well, it's a great story coming out of Tasmania. And I think Tassie uh, produces wool better than anywhere else in the world because of the, the environment that we grow it in. So this sort of... A, agreement with, uh, with Autobox really goes to uh, put a lot of faith in, in what we're doing and, and continuing to produce a product that we think is pretty special.